Welcome. So excited to have you today. Today is our carrot palooza. We have so many carrots. They are beautiful. They are enormous. They are crunchy and delectable and they're ready for you to pick them up tomorrow. And so I thought that I would do all carrot menus today uh, in light of our beautiful carrots. And the great thing about carrots really like the most optimal 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 nutrition you get from a carrot is really by eating it raw you can cook it in other ways and get all of the beta carotene and the vitamin a and all of that but raw carrots are amazing on their own so as a snack it's definitely a way to go they have fiber they have a ton of beta carotene which your body turns into vitamin a which is really good for your eyesight. So that old adage of like, car eat carrots, they're good for your eyes is actually true. On top of that, they have gluten, which is another amazing ingredient to give your body for proper eyesight. They have beta carotene, oh, I already said that. They have um, lycopene, which is another amazing thing. They have biotin, which is really great for your hair and nails. So a ton of delicious things. So we'll get started. We'll make the jam first. That's right, we're making carrot jam. It's not on everybody's diet radar, but carrot jam is really cool because you can spice it up, you can make it only sweet. It's amazing on toast or with plain muffins for those of you who have made the, um, who have done the pan curriculum. It's a really good accompaniment to just the plain muffins. And it's amazing with cheese. So that said, let's do it. So we have, four and a half cups of carrots, which for those of you who will be picking up tomorrow, that's five, uh, that's five carrots of these big guys. And then we have one and a half cups of sugar. I'm going to add a little lemon later. And because I like things spicy and I will eat this with cheese, I'm going to add crushed red pepper. This is just <laughs> from our pan program. You can get it from Domino's, wherever you get it. And I'm gonna make a spicy carrot jam. If you wanted, you could add cloves, cinnamon, cardamom, you could add a ton of things because carrot jam is popular around the world. Um, so Google has a lot to share with you about it. Let's get started. So in the pan, I'm going to add the carrots. Uh, the one and a half cups of sugar the half of a cup of water. I didn't say that, I think, out loud, but you have to add that too. And I'll stir it around. The great thing about carrots is they have a lot of natural pectin, and fruits with high pectin make the best jams because once that releases, it turns into a gelatinous substance that holds it all together and that you are able to spread on delicious pastries and whatnot. So carrots actually have like one of the highest levels of pectin in any vegetable. So that's just an FYI. All right, I'm gonna put this on the stove and I'll meet you over there. Okay, so we're at the stove. I put it on the stove, medium high heat. I'm going to add like a half of a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna add the red pepper. Um, for those of you who don't like spicy food, this is a complete option. I don't even know if this is gonna taste good, so it's really up to you. Note to self, don't use a tablespoon when you are cooking over high heat, you'll burn your fingers. So I'm going to stir it. Um, I know I pre-grated these carrots, and for those of you who are not familiar on how to grate a carrot, you can email us or text us and or stop by tomorrow and just ask um, for maybe some direction on that. But basically I peeled the carrots and then I used an, an Ikea grater um, just to grate them. Be really careful of your knuckles. I'm sure I've talked about this in other videos. Um, but that's pretty much it. I just didn't want you guys to watch me sweat so hard while I was doing that because it was actually kind of a lot of carrots to grate. Um, all right, so that's it. I'm going to leave that alone and we can go back to the counter and I'll just turn around and stir it occasionally. This is going to simmer for about 40 minutes and then 
then we'll check it. But I'll just be checking on it every now and then. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, we're over here. We're gonna make some carrot pancakes, latkes, carrot cakes on the stove. We have two cups of grated carrots. We have a little salt, which I can add right now, about a half of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to chop some garlic. This is really, I mean, this can be any flavor that you want. You can make this, you know, you can add other vegetables to this. You can add ginger or like provincial herbs or nothing at all. You can do you and whatever you'd like. This is just what I had on hand and it's the most economical. I will add some of our spices from the pantry since we have them, but they are completely optional. You don't have to. I really think that everything is delicious with salt, pepper, garlic, and onions. Like you can basically flavor anything forever with that. And then maybe jalapeno, but that's just my preference. So you guys do you at home and just know that there is absolutely no right and no wrong. It's just food. And if you enjoy eating it, then it's perfect. All right, so that's garlic. So that was two cloves of garlic. Um, now I'm going to add the egg. So this is one egg. And I'm not throwing things on the floor. I, there's just a big compost bucket at my feet instead of my trash bowl. So I'm not just like, you know, just so you know, in case you were like, what's happening over there? I'm gonna just break this up a little bit. And I'll add, I already added some, some salt. I'll add some paprika, why not? Some pepper. Paprika and pepper and all those spicy things are so really, really special to have in your diet because pepper, um, granulated garlic, just in case that you didn't have enough garlic, like me. Pepper actually, all peppers, spicy foods, help break down protein when you eat it. So even if you're on a vegan diet or if you're like pairing this with the chicken breast, spicy things help break down protein in your body. So it's very convenient. All right, I'm gonna add, I'm going to add the flour first. I'm gonna stir this. So this is boiling now. I'm just gonna give it a stir and I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer just to keep an eye on it, but I'll keep cooking. So, and then I'm gonna mix this up. And I'll add the egg. I'll add a little bit, scrape the sides. That's, a, that's my trick, you can add things to the bowl and scrape the sides if you don't have a spatula and get it more clean. Okay, now, now it's time to use my hands. I'm gonna use my hands and I'm going to mix this up. So I thought it wasn't going to be enough, but it's actually a really good consistency. Okay, we have um, a tray. I've just lined mine with paper, but you don't have to do this. And we're going to make little cakes. I'm going to squeeze them. I'm gonna make tiny ones. Just squeeze them to whatever size you want. The smaller the cakes, the quicker they cook. And because this does have uh, raw egg in it, I would probably go on the smaller side just to ensure that you're actually getting, you know, the egg cooked all the way. Make sure that as well, that they're not um, really like high in the center because of course the thicker something is, the longer it takes to cook as well. And you want everything to cook approximately at the same time. If this is too soft for you, you can always put this in the refrigerator for overnight or you can for a few hours you can freeze these I've never frozen them but I'm sure they freeze well and then you can cook them the next day however with things with egg in them when you freeze them you do need to really make sure that you're cooking it very well the next day uh, so the egg cooks through 
So maybe fresh is the way to go, but we'll even see how these handle. I'm going to cook only six. So I'm gonna set the rest aside and we'll cook them later in the kitchen. And let's go over to the stove again. Okay, so we're back over at the stove. I have the carrot jam. Really, it's like a marmalade because it's gonna be chunky, but I have this cooking. I'm just stirring it occasionally. And on a medium high heat, we are going to cook these little latkes. I have a plate set aside with some paper just to catch the grease when I uh, take them off of the heat. And you don't need a lot of oil, but you do need enough so that they fry and cook well around the edges. I actually don't think that that's enough. It might be. I don't think so. I don't know if my mic stretches that far, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I used olive oil and now I'm using vegetable oil because that's what we have. So again, if you run out of something at home, you don't have to worry about it. You do you. Your kitchen is your domain. And just because a recipe or I am using something, it doesn't mean you have to. So just keep that in mind and don't stress out if that happens to you. I'm gonna get this spatula and I think that's hot enough. Oops, careful when you're cooking with oil. Great, that is a nice sizzle. We want it to sizzle, it's actually probably a little too low. And we'll just place them on and let them cook for a few minutes. Probably, I would say about three minutes aside. I'm probably gonna crowd this too much if I add that middle one. So I'm going to cook five. And just keep an eye on it while they cook. Make sure that there's enough oil coating the pan. And it should cook up nice and even. Again, I'm stirring this. So I did set a timer on my phone for 40 minutes just to make sure. This isn't like other jam that we've made. In the pan program, we do make raspberry jam and it's actually really fun to like tell when your jam is ready because you can do this spoon trick where you take the spoon out and you make a line through it and if the jam doesn't run through the line, it's cooked. But with carrot jam or marmalade, it's a little harder to do if they're grated like this. So I would say 40 to 50 minutes, but it could be a little less time. So I think you just wanna give it the chance. As soon as it's done, I'll add some lemon juice and then that'll be done. But we'll move on to these little carrots. So they're pretty fragile, but that looks really nice, nice and golden brown. So I'm gonna flip it. The nice thing about these is you can cook these in advance and once they're cooked, you can freeze them and store them for three to six months in your freezer if they're stored well. And you can take them out and just put them in the microwave and heat them up and grab them on the go, which is really great just to have something that's ready made in your freezer like that. The nice thing about eggs, which I don't know if a lot of you know, but eggs actually get better when they're microwaves. Like you can freeze an egg or put an egg in the refrigerator and microwave it and it's just as moist and fluffy. I mean, the first time you reheat it, than it was almost when you made it. So they're really great um, to have in things like this that you're going to reheat later. This pan is like on its last legs, but it's still doing the trick. We're gonna keep cooking that. We'll keep stirring this. So in a perfect world where I was an organized person today, which doesn't, you know, sometimes people just aren't organized. I actually should have made the salad ahead of time so we could plate right away. But 
we're gonna cook these and we'll set them aside and then we'll make the salad, no big deal. But if I were actually making this to eat right away and which is what we usually do at Breadhead and I want everything to be the right temperature as soon as it's ready, I would have made the salad in advance. So note to self, making salad dressing or making salad that won't wilt in advance like the kale and the cucumber that we'll use today, always a good idea to do it first. Then you don't forget like I did. But no worries, it's gonna happen anyway. I'm gonna keep cooking that. And that's almost done. And I think this has about 20 more minutes. I can check my phone in a sec. flip this one back over because it wasn't really brown. I really hope you guys try these recipes and if you do, will you please send us a video or um, or just, I burned that one a little bit, or just even a picture. Send it to us and we'll post it. All right, these are done. I'm going to take these off. Man down. So there's a lot of ways you could probably make this vegan as well. Um, for those of you who are interested, maybe with flax seeds, I'm not really sure, but I would assume that it's possible and delicious. You could use chickpea flour. There's a lot of different ways you could go with that. I'm gonna set these aside right now. These are just cooling, this is cooking. It looks pretty much the same, but it still looks good. And we'll go back over and make our salad. Alrighty, we're back over here. We're gonna chop up some kale. And the way I like to do it, you can do this by, you know, you can do this like one at a time, meticulously, like restaurant style, or you can just grab it and tear all the leaves off of it and do the best you can. The stalk is not that fun to eat, so I would try to avoid that. Kale is so good for you. So many, like dark leafy green vegetables are just amazing. They have so much vitamin K, so many B vitamins, so many vitamins, um, antioxidants, vitamin C. They lower blood pressure. They just do all these amazing things for you. Fiber. Um, so they're pretty great. And kale is amazing because you can cook it but you can also put it in a salad you can make like a kale salad and it's really one of those salads that are so great because you if you're bringing it to a picnic or someone's house or a potluck you can do it the night before because kale just sort of gets better with a little bit of time it sort of marinates and softens up so leaving like an overnight kale salad in is like pretty much perfect or exactly the same as it was the day that you made it. So it saves a lot of time if you want to do like food prep with kale salad. Um, just so you know, it's always in there and you can add so many things. You can make it sweet, you can make it savory. It's amazing. So I'm just gonna chop it up really well. Probably a little too much for this. I'm gonna stir my carrots. So we're about 24 minutes into the carrots and almost all of the water is evaporated. So just so you know, that's happening over there. You want to stir it enough so that you don't burn your carrots. Um, that's enough kale, so I'm gonna set this aside and we'll do some cucumber. I'm just gonna do about a, a third of a cucumber. Really simple dish. Again, I'm I'm peeling this directly into our compost bowl, um, so not to worry. It's not going onto the floor. It's just really big, so you can't put it on the counter. And then we'll cut up the cucumber. So anything that rolls, I like to cut it in half and then lay flat side down. And then I'm gonna quarter this and make some little slices. 
Again, cucumber as well. It doesn't hold up as much as kale does, but this would be fine to eat the next day. So adding that, I'm going to do really simple like salt, lemon juice, and oil, maybe some pepper too, and that's it. So I squeezed about half of the half of the lemon. The rest I'm gonna put in the carrot jam. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of avocado oil because we just ran out of olive oil. This uh, was $1.69, so it's not too expensive, but if you are on a budget, you know, this is a tiny bit of oil for $1.69. You can get a lot bigger oil um, at another store for less money. So understandably, if you can't, then don't. And you don't need avocado oil to make a delicious salad. So that's ready. I'm just gonna set it aside. Put this away. I'm going to put this away. I'm going to clean up and we'll plate it up. Still checking my carrot jam. Okay, with that back over there, we will plate it up. So I reheated these in the microwave just a little bit, just so our staff, our breadhead team, um, doesn't have to eat cold fritters. But you could also plate this, you know, just like this, family style. It looks really good. These look pretty tasty. Put three of them on there. And then with our salad, again, this makes like really colorful, flavorful food on its own. So you don't have to plate it, but I like to plate it. It's like ceremonial and every, every day is a fancy day if you plate your food. So here is part one of our carrot palooza. Please try the recipe, carrot fritters, kale cucumber salad available for you tomorrow. And we'll be back with the jam. Okay, so our final stage of our Lollapalooza carrot extravaganza. This cooked for 30 minutes and the water was evaporated. And so I stopped because you don't want to burn, you know, your jam, no matter what jam you're making, you don't want to burn it. When it gets too low on water, it's time to stop. So a few things about this jam. Right now, it's a very, like sticky consistency. It's really hot. As all jam, it's made hot. It's going to go into the jars to cool tomorrow or when it's completely cooled down, it will be more like gelatinous and jammy in texture. Um, a few things about this, I could have blended this up before at a few different stages. There's a lot of tips online on how to make smooth carrot jam. This is more like a chutney marmalade. Um, because you can make jam without doing those steps. If you don't have a blender or a Cuisinart or a handheld mixer, you don't have to do that to get something delicious. So I didn't want it to be, you know, out of reach. So here it is, jam. Okay, this method is not sterilized jamming, jarring, sterilization. Um, if I were to sterilize this and make jam that would store for up to 12 months or even longer in a cupboard, I would be boiling these. There'd be like a completely different technique and um, I'm not doing that. I'm going to store this in the refrigerator. This is a very clean uh, mason jar and this will store nicely in the refrigerator for two weeks about that, um, just on its own. Any further you could probably throw it away so just so you know this is not canning this is just making jam and putting it in a safe receptacle to cool and then you eat it for two weeks and it's probably done so please don't put this on your kitchen shelf in a cupboard for a year and come back to it and be like oh I forgot about this jam and then die or so it would be terrible so enough said about that I'm going to just start putting it in the jars. Um, you can use leftover jars. I'm actually gonna use a tablespoon for this because that's a really big spoon. You can use leftover jars of other jam. You can use jars of mustard, really anything. Um, you just need to put it in a clean jar for storing. And that is enough. So, and then if I were making, you know, you could seal this 
you can screw on the lid and with like raspberry jam you can turn it upside down and it creates a vacuum seal and so when you open it it'll pop but just remember that pop is artificial it's not sterilized so that's just for fun <laughs> when you open it it pops um, but as soon as this cools down, which is tomorrow, I'm bringing cheese and we're all gonna eat some with our cheese. Um, you can eat it and enjoy it. I'll stop there, there's a little bit left in here. So this recipe that I made, um, I would say made three, four ounce jars, or maybe this is six ounces, made about three jars and that is it. If you don't like cheese, you could, it's really sweet, but the peppers that I added were actually really spicy too. So I think cheese is great for this. You could add this on lamb, you could add this on pork, chicken. Um, I don't know, you could try it with fish. You could probably, I would probably put it on pork or chicken or lamb. You choose, you do you, we'll be eating with cheese. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed today's Carrot Palooza.